Hello boys and girls, Perla Wisdom here from the Perla Wisdom Show as we see right here. NHL Perla Wisdom Show and we were doing, we've been doing free agent watches and trades and all kinds of fun frolic. Go check it out. We did a trade of Hellebuck. We had, uh, uh, what's his name? Tarasenko. We just did. And now we're going to another Russian and one that's going to be very sought off after in the land I would imagine after winning a cup with the Vegas Golden Knights we're looking at Ivan Barbashev um, he is uh, we're going to look at Barbashev his numbers what kind of numbers he might get in the open market and we got like eight or nine teams that he may go to so it's going to take a little bit get out the popcorn and uh, get yourself all set up with the Vada Jaime's Jaime's Body Lube, there, it's the best there, I said it. I recommend the new watermelon flavor. Okay, so Barbashev, uh, he's going to be a free agent. Uh, by looking at Vegas, it's unlikely that he resigns there, but I'm not going to put him up. They, they, they are very capped out, but they can surprise you. They can make some moves that you wouldn't see coming, and possibly they bring Barbashev back, and that's the end of her. One of the things we were looking at, and I know a lot of you were asking me to do a Marner trade proposal. However, it came out yesterday that it is highly unlikely that Tre Living and the Toronto Maple Leafs are going to break up their core. So I'm not doing that video until I see more evidence that that is going to happen. But until then, we got lots to look at, boys and girls, for sure. We certainly have a lot to look at as far as Barbashev is concerned. And just a little hint came out also that San Jose and Eric Carlson have come to an agreement that it's time to move on. And that will likely be my next video. So subscribe to my channel uh, and be ready for what is going to be a really crazy ride here in the uh, off season, I imagine. I'm pretty accurate at these. I've been doing them for quite a while, and for some reason, I get I tend to hit it where players may go and how much and all of that. So I hope you enjoy it. Let's get into Barbashev. All right, here we're looking at Barbashev on cap, cap friendly. Cap friendly, it's the best there. I said it. Ivan Barbashev. He's only 27 years old, and he's a free agent this year. Played for the St. Louis Blues most of the time and got traded to Vegas this year and, of course, won a cup. He, uh, he's six foot 187, but he plays way bigger than that. He's a solid two-way guy. Uh, his defensive analytics are very good. And offensively, he's great. His compete level is high. He's the kind of guy that teams tend to line up for if they ever become available. His career numbers are 194 points in 433 games, which doesn't really blow you out of the water. But as it, from 2021-22 on, he was a, right around a 60-point player, 50, 50 to 60-point player um, last year with the St. Louis Blues and uh, uh, Vegas Golden Knights combined. He had 39 points. 45 points in 75 games um, and of course had a fantastic playoffs where he had 18 points in 22 games and like I said it's all the other intangibles that go with Barbashev he can play center he can play left wing he he's versatile he can play up and down your lineup he's a great utility player and I think there's going to be tons of teams looking for a cup winner it's always nice to have a guy who's done it before in your lineup that can play a playoff style hockey and do fairly well in the regular season as well. So the first team I'm going to go to is one that um, has been rumored for Barbashev quite a bit. I've heard many, I've heard many rumors and I don't usually go by rumors if there's no logic involved in it, but there could be some logic applied to the rumor for the Edmonton Oilers. Um, the Edmonton Oilers, of course, lost to Vegas and got to see Barbachev in the playoffs firsthand playing against them on a regular basis. Uh, of course, there's going to be cap problems 
We know that there tends to be cap problems when it comes to the Oilers because they play up to the cap. Let's take a look at what their cap situation is um, and who they have to sign, which makes them... This is the reason why I have it as one of the least likely teams to go to. Their current cap space is $5 million a year. And they have a very important restricted free agent to sign in Evan Bouchard. So they're going to have a difficult time just getting that signed up. However, moves can be made to make room. And there has been talk of Kaylor Yamamoto moving on, uh, possibly Warren Fogle being bought out. Um, there's even been talk of Ryan Nugent Hopkins being traded. I don't see that coming uh this is a team that really uh, supports its uh, players that have been loyal to them. So it's unlikely. Also, I've heard things like CC possibly being moved on from. The other thing that gives me pause in this, uh, in this regard is that they need defense more than they need offense. And I've heard them involved with guys like Pesci in Carolina, which would be fantastic which would leave them virtually no room. They also have their own guys that did play with them last year, as far as such as Yanmark. Uh, apparently, Bukestad is almost for sure not coming back. Uh, Koshton is a restricted free agent. McLeod, it would be extremely difficult to make up the room for this, for this to happen. However, we can take a look at the possibility that, say, they buy out Fogel, they find a way to trade Yamamoto, they could bring Barbashev in. He's a type of player that, a uh, type of physical two-way player that they do desperately need. And uh, Drysaddle can go back and play that top-heavy line with McDavid and Evander Kane. And uh, Nugent Hopkins could move to the middle, Barbashev to the left. And um, you'd have to fill out something on the right-hand side there because Kaylor Yamamoto is going to be gone. Maybe they give Quinn Costin more of a look. Uh, Holloway would then be playing, and uh, you try to give Yanmark a million dollars, and it might work. It's unlikely, but I've heard the rumors so much here living in Edmonton about Barbashev going to Edmonton. I had to at least take a look. I personally think this is a very unlikely spot for him to go to for several reasons. Um, one, it's not the most climate friendly place and he's going to have a place to go, lots of places to go to. So, um, I find it unlikely. Tell me what you think Edmonton Oilers fans. I, I would love to have him on the team. I just don't see how it could all work out that they can make enough room to get in there. If you see it another way, if you can figure out a way that I can't, that, uh, Edmonton could make a case, maybe not, uh, qualifying Ryan McLeod. I mean, it would hurt their depth, I think, more than it would help it to do it. But I thought I'd throw them in there and anyways. Oilers fans, tell me what you think. Barbashev, what would you do? Is it possible you can move some other players I'm not thinking about? I, I know I'm pretty sure somebody's going to come up and say Jack Campbell. I just don't see that moving. I don't see that contract moving. And short of that happening, I can't see Barbashev going to Edmonton. All right, next. The Carolina Hurricanes. Um, the Carolina Hurricanes were are a fantastic team um, built with a significant amount of depth, but I do think that that depth was challenged a lot in the playoffs. Scoring certainly was challenged a lot in the playoffs, but Barbashev is the type of player that I believe Carolina doesn't really have in their lineup right now. A guy that can play with serious grit. He can play two-way. they got tons of guys that can do that. But his grit level, his compete level, his physicality is not something that's prevalent in this lineup and something I think could help this team an awful lot, especially when you're getting down to crunch time in the playoffs. He would fit into Brindamore's system very, very well, which I hope that Brindamore decides to kind of tweak a little bit. They play a heavy man-on-man -man system in the defensive zone, which leaves his players fairly tired come when they get into the offensive zone. A guy like Barbashev, though, is used to that because St. Louis Blues have played that way. Vegas plays a hybrid that way, which I would hope that Carolina would tap into maybe through Barbashev to make this move. 
Now, as far as cap space is concerned, they have uh, several players that they might want to be looking to sign. Certainly one of them is going to be Jordan Stahl, but he's going to get a lot less than he did in his contract. I believe it was somewhere around $6 million a year. Um, they might, Paul Stastny probably retires, maybe step on, they throw a league minimum. You know, there's not much here right now until next year where the cap will go up that scares them off from looking at a guy like Barbashev. Um, there's been talk that Pesci could be moved. Uh, that makes sense because Dylan Cog Coglin could probably take that uh, Pesci role. And if Pesci's looking for a big contract, Carolina has been known to be fairly solid on their price of players. And if Pesci wants to go over that, to them it kind of signifies that they uh, – they're not willing to take a little bit of a haircut to be here. You probably don't really want to be here. That's kind of the narrative I get from Carolina. They also have to sign some goaltenders uh, since they only have, since Anderson and Ranta are not, are unrestricted free agents. Whether that's going outward or re-signing both, it'll, it'll, it definitely will cut into what is a $24 million cap space. Even with all of those signings, they should have plenty of room for a guy like Barbashev. And I personally certainly would be looking for a guy like that. They could still even look, out, look at maybe going over to Buffalo and getting a guy like Olofsson, who is not very good defensively, but a pure scorer, which is, is, I think is something that would be valuable to Carolina right now. And they do have cap space for that. Now, they're not a cap team, and I am not privy to how much below the cap they want to stay. But I think it's fairly, I can be very confident that um, a guy like Barbashev would fit uh, cap-wise into their system. I think he's probably going to be pulling about 5 million somewhere around there, 5.5, 5 million somewhere around there. And, uh, you know, that's not a bad number. He fits into like, uh, what, Teravinen? That's Teravinen type money. He signed that quite a while ago. So you can't expect new additions to come in and and uh, automatically take half the cut because they're half the player here. It's just the way the cap world works. As the years go by and uh, the cap goes up, players get more expensive. Barbashev could then play either center and Kokaniemi move down. You could play him center on the third line. You could add offensive depth and play him left wing on that line with Drury and Neeson. Uh, in case of injury, he could take Tara Bynan's spot. He can play all over the lineup, which is one of the reasons why I think Carolina will be very interested. Whether he's interested in Carolina or not, I'm not sure. I don't have his head, but it, tell me, Carolina fans. Would you like a guy, do you agree with me that Carolina really could use a guy that could bang some bodies, play both ways, have a high compete level, has won a cup, could add some leadership to this group? I just think he checks off all the boxes for Carolina to take a good look at him. Subscribe to my channel, comment in the comment section, and let me know. All right, next. The Anaheim Ducks. Now, the Anaheim Ducks, and there's another one coming up here that's going to be the same, I believe would be a team that Barbashev, he just won a cup, okay? He's won his cup now. Um, he hasn't made an enormous amount of money, NHL player-wise, up until now. And he could decide, you know what, I'm going to go for the money. I'm going to go for as much money as I possibly can here. Set myself up for long term. By the way, uh, as far as Carolina, you're probably looking for a seven-year contract with him. And he's 27 up until he's 35 years old. So, um, being Russian, there is no Russians on this team. I don't know if that matters to him, but to a lot of Russians, that can be the case where they are not huge on... Uh, they like to go where their compadres are. However... If that doesn't bother him, and there were, there was Tarasenko in St. Louis, not really any in Vegas, 
Um, and he's just looking for the money and he's looking for possibly an up and coming team that he can build and enjoy uh, the sunny, beautiful Anaheim weather and all of those things. I could see this being a very possible thing. Now, what does that give to Anaheim? Well, one thing, I think it's starting to wear a little thin with this rebound, rebuild stuff in Anaheim at least with the sponsors and the owners. That being said, I don't think Barbashev's going to just propel them into the playoffs, but I think he could be a very nice addition to a team that has been rebuilding for quite some time. And honestly, at this point, doesn't really have a lot of players knocking right on the door on that left side. Um, Galimov is quite a ways away. In the minors, you've got Regenda that's had a had a shot there, but he's not really an offensive guru by any chance. It's a stretch of the imagination. And really nobody else. For a team that's rebuilding, you would think there would be more of a pool on that left side. But really they have Colangelo on the right. Almost all of their guys that could possibly jump into the lineup are, right, are righties. So... They could fast track a little bit here, sign uh, Barbashev, who also brings a little something that they don't really have. Same as we were talking about Carolina. They have a lot of flashy guys like Troy Terry and, and Zegris. Uh, they have Mason McTavish. He would fit into the mold of what Barbashev is for sure. Big, tough, two-way, strong, scores. He's a center. Um, so he, that he fills in that line in that regard fairly well. However, the top line, Adam Henrique is getting up there. This is probably going to be his last year. This is going to be his last year of his contract. I doubt he gets re-signed. If he does, it's going to be a lot less than that. And you could throw Barbashev up there to get some grit with, with Zegers and Terry. He's only 27 years old. You could sign him for seven years till he's 35. I know because the downside of that contract might be a little bit rough. But to get a cup, a guy with a cup in this lineup at this point, to just show them the professionalism and everything it takes to get there, I think would be extremely valuable for Anaheim. And I think they would actually be willing to maybe pay a little more. Let's look at their uh, cap space going into uh, next year. They have a lot. 39 million in cap space. Now they have guys to sign and very important guys. Jamie Drysdale is going to be Trevor Zegers, Troy Terry. They got to sign all these guys. And you're going to be looking at probably just off the top of my head, 25 to 30 million of it, of their 25, 27 million. So they could give them six and all of a sudden, boom, they're almost capped out. But they've got their core he becomes part of the core set for a lot of years hopefully on good contracts that as the cap goes up you can keep on adding to this lineup i think it'd be a fantastic addition i'm not sure if he'd be interested to go into a team that's in a kind of a deepish rebuild here in anaheim but if he wants that extra half a million dollars a year and uh, I think Anaheim would have to pony that up in order to convince him to go to a non-contending team right now. You can, that's an extra three and a half million. It's a lot of kashish, man. Shashish. That's a lot of shashish. That's a lot of money to be able to bring back to Russia at the end of your career. So tell me what you think. It's a beautiful place. You got an environment that really nobody knows who you are. So you're not in a... Uh, your family can roam around and not have to worry about being noticed all the time. You don't have to be in the news all the time. A lot less drama. I could see a player wanting that. I don't know if Barbashev's the one. It could also be that he got a taste of the cup and he doesn't want to do anything different from that. And he just says no to Anaheim, which is why I have them a little lower on the list of these teams. Tell me what you think, Anaheim fans. Comment in the comment section and let me know. How would you enjoy somebody like Barbershop at this point of the rebuild for Anaheim? Come, uh, subscribe to my channel and let me know. Okay, next. Uh, we have Colorado Avalanche. The Colorado Avalanche, unfortunately, have lost their spiritual leader in, Lan in, in Landeskog for 
an undetermined amount of time. He's an LTIR candidate. Um, I can't remember what the injury is, if it's back or, 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 or hip or something. I can't remember what it was, but it's something very serious. It's, uh, he's got to have surgery, and it's not looking good. At least he could be off for a year and maybe never the same. And they're still a contending team. Now, they have $12 million in cap space. But they have a lot of people to sign. They have Alex Newhook they have to sign. They have Bowen Byram they have to sign. And both of those are going to take a good chunk of that. Now, that being said, they don't have to bring back Comfer. There's a lot of guys here. I think you're going to see a lot of movement in Colorado. So it's possible they could still make some room. And the reason why I'm saying Barbashev here is he's at least similar to Landis Gog. I'm not putting him in Landis Gog category, but he plays a similar type of game. <coughs> Two-way, strong defensively. He's also got a cuff, as we've mentioned before, now that he's won one in Vegas. He's only 27 years old, so he sort of fits in that age group of Lekkanen, McKinnon, Rantanen. They're all around that age group. And I found that it's not a bad idea to keep that camaraderie between the age groups there. I, I, I would think that they would also be looking for some veterans to mix in here, especially in the forward group. But as it stands right now, and I think I think we noticed in the playoffs when the, they lost to Seattle, their depth has really taken a hit. Um, they had nobody in their bottom six had a point or hardly had a point in the playoffs against Seattle. Um, and now they're now you're going to be losing Landeskog for good. And adding more offense to this lineup, I think, would be absolutely essential. So going to a contender, or at least perceived contender in Colorado, you might be able to get them in the $5.2, $5.3 million contract area, something like that. Um, Lekkonen's injured, but he's, he's supposed to come back, uh, next year fully healthy. So you could keep that Lekkonen, McKinnon, Rantanen, or you could try Barbashev up there, bring Lekkonen down, or you could put Barbashev with Newhook and Nachushkin. The reason why I like playing them with Newhook is Barbashev and Newhook kind of are the same situation. Barbashev had to fight to get himself up into the lineup in St. Louis, and Newhook is in that space now. He's He was kind of a disappointment last year, Newhook was, getting 30 points in 82 games. I really thought they, that Colorado was uh, figuring that he could step up a little more than that. Maybe with a guy like Barbashev and, of course, Valerie Nachuskin is also Russian. So there's some camaraderie there and a draw there. He can help Newhook become everything that they think he can be. I personally still think Newhook is going to be a very good player. And uh, it would add a very solid second line. Then O'Connor can go back into his normal spot here on the third line with uh, what looks right, as of right now, would be Ben Myers. But I do think they'll probably find a veteran for that, for, for that second line and uh, add a few more to that fourth line as well. How are they going to do that with the cap space? Well, there's been talk of them possibly moving on from Samuel Gerard um, because, oh, and by the way, Gorgiev is also Russian. So you got a couple of Russians here, which is a good draw for a Russian player. Um, in that case, if they were to do something like that, that would give them some cap room there. Who's going to take over that spot? Uh, Jack Johnson will probably come back for a lot less, a lot less. Um, and you could fill the rest of the roles with league minimum guys and probably find your way just under the cap going into the uh, going into the regular season. That top six with uh, Johnson coming back in that top four with Byron McCarr and Taves, Byron taking a big step forward, maybe getting a couple assets for Gerard is probably good enough at least to get them into the playoffs and they can add as the season goes on and there's more cap flexibility especially at the deadline. What do you think about that? Barbashev, just won a cup. 
that grindy type player like Landeskog that can balance out lines, can play. He can even play center and help Newhook at center as well. He's actually a pretty darn good center if you want to play him that way as well. Tell me what you think, Colorado fans. Do you like Barbashev there in that spot? Are there any other players besides Barbashev you'd like to see? And uh, subscribe to my channel and let me know. I'll comment with you. I'll talk to you down there in the comment section. I'll tell you all right now. All right. Next, the Toronto Maple Leafs. And, okay, yes, there's going to be cap issues going on here, no doubt about that. So we should probably look at cut the cap first. But before I do, I will say this. Barbashev, that type of player, is something that I've heard Toronto fans and pretty much murmurs in the organization uh, reading a ton of articles uh, that they would just love a guy. I think they need a guy like this. They need a guy that's going to grind it out in the corners and get Matthews and Marners and Nylanders the puck out to the front of the net, willing to go to the front of the net, willing to bring energy every shift. It's just won a cup. Remember that. He just won a cup and played fantastic doing so. I think Toronto would be absolutely crazy not to take a good look at this. But, of course, we know we have cap situations going on here. They have $9 million in cap space. Um, apparently, not bringing back Bunting, not bringing back Kerfoot, not bringing back uh, Justin Hole. So, who do they have left to sign? Noel Achari, league minimum. Uh, Dave, or maybe a million, something like that. That's basically what they're going to be looking at is league minimum guys to fill out this roster. And they could get him at $5 million and use that, the extra $4 million to just fill out the roster a little bit. Get a few more veterans for that bottom. You, they're way too green down there with McCann, Abrazizi, Steves. These are very young players. And uh, we, I, you've seen it. I've seen it over and over again that Teams that go super young in their bottom six usually are not successful. So they probably have to look that way. But it shouldn't be too expensive to do so. Uh, you could bring Kampf back. He was pretty good for their bottom six. But if you took Barbashev now and you threw him up there with Matthews and Marner, I think he's the perfect kind of guy to be able to add a little color to that lineup, to grind it out in the corner, something they haven't had in a while, can dig out the pucks, get it out to the Martyrs and Matthews and let them do their thing. He's a great complimentary player who, like I said, put up 50 to 60 points or at least on pace for for the last two years. Then Yarncroft can go down with Tavares and Nylander and Lafferty can fill out that roster spot. Um, you could put Nyes up there as well. And Yarncroft could come down. He could play right wing with uh, um, Lafferty and uh, try to either give, home, give Holmberg a shot now or find yourself a little more veteran of a, of, of a centerman to play on that line. And you're looking at a fairly deep team. And I would say a much more balanced lineup. Tell me what you think, Toronto fans. Would you like Barbashev for $5 million for seven years, somewhere around there? to fill out your roster. He's 27. That would bring him up till he's 35. But let's face it. It's win now for Toronto. And when is the last time? It's a cadre maybe that they had a player that plays that type of style in Toronto. I think they desperately need it. Do you think so, Toronto fans? Comment in the comment section. Subscribe to my channel. And let me know. Next. The Chicago Blackhawks. And remember I said I was there was going to be a team here that would basically be uh, Barbashev taking the money. And then hoping that they can rebuild fast. They got Bedard coming. You know, the, there is a little bit of a future there. But yeah, they're probably going to suck for the next couple of years. But here's the thing. I, I have Chicago up here for several reasons. They've got $37 million in cap space, and they have to reach the cap floor. They're not even close to the cap floor yet. 
They're so not close to the cap floor, they actually gave Andreas Athanasiu a $4 million contract. They're not afraid of giving contracts out right now. So for a guy like Barbashev, who can help, who has a cup, I'll just mention it over and over again here, he can help protect guys like Bedard. He plays a grindy game. He plays a difficult game to play against. He can help these young players play like that. And he could probably get like six and a half million here. Seriously, just to get to the cap floor. And by the time they're good, that six and a half million may not look like that bad of a contract for a 60 point guy that can play really good two way hockey and be a nice compliment to guys like to the, the stars that they're about to draft over the next couple of years. As far as for Barbashev is concerned, he's already won his cup. He may be going looking for the best place he can make a lot of money and uh, have fun playing with one of the superstars of the future in Bedard. I, I, I don't know where his head's at in that. It could be two ways. It could be he got a taste of the cup and he just doesn't want to keep on stop going that way. Or he's a guy who hasn't made a lot of NHL money up until now. Well, not huge. He's got a family to take care of. When you're talking about an extra million, maybe a million two, maybe even a million and a half per year, that's a lot of freaking scratch, man. You're going to bring that home to Russia after it's all said and done. I wouldn't be surprised that he took him up on it. And you'll say, okay, well, Chicago's rebuilding. Why would they do this? Well, you got to have players and you got to get to the cap floor. And I do think that they're going to use their cap space to get more draft picks, bring in some veterans that, uh, so other teams can get cap room, um, which teams that I brought up previous to this may do to get a guy like Barbashev, such as Colorado and so on and so forth like that. And they'll throw a draft pick and you'll get more veteran players. And the team will still be bad. Don't get me wrong. They're still going to be bad enough to be getting top five picks in the draft. Uh, there's not much on this team. They have terrible goaltending still, all of that. So... I could see it happening. Could you see it happening? Chicago Blackhawks fans, comment in the comment section. Let me know. Do you think a character guy like Barbashev would add to this lineup to help these young guys know what it means to compete every night? Barbashev is a guy that has done that his whole career in St. Louis. What I love about him, too, is even in the last year when he was in St. Louis, um, it was a tough year. Everybody knew that O'Reilly was going. There was a lot of reasons to just pack it in and say, screw it, whatever. I don't care. Um, we're not making it. It's a disaster here, and I'm going to cop out. He didn't do that. He gave her every night, and I imagine he would do that here. He could build up a lot of confidence in the young players and a lot of pride in the organization. Chicago fans... Comment in the comment section. Let me know what you think of Barbashev getting, say, six, six and a quarter million dollars a year for the next seven years to get you to the cap and in the long run bring a lot of character to this lineup. Co subscribe to my channel and let me know. All right, next. Winnipeg Jets. And I'm surprised I have them this high. But there's... Um, there is a lot of change probably going from what I understand and from what I hear going on in Winnipeg. Um, there's talk of Mike Shifley being moved on from. It's very unlikely. It's pretty much set in stone that Dubois is not coming back. Um, there has been some character issues as their coach at the end of the year last year. Uh, and I always forget his name. Please forgive me. It'll come to me. Rick Bonus, uh, at the end of the year, basically called out his team and said they were playing like a bunch of bitches. Guess who else said that in a much nicer way? Paul Maurice last year when he stopped, when he quit coaching. He didn't quit on the team. The team quit on him, by the way. And Bonus believes the team quit again. So there's character issues. I'm sure they're going to try to find a way to move Wheeler. I don't see it ever happening because that seemed to me, from what I saw, the optics on the outside with the way Wheeler responded to bonus when that happened, he would be a big one as well. But 
if they're going to do something like this, getting a guy now like Barbashev who has played his ass off his whole career, he's been has great character. He has a cup. Um, he's a grinded out type of player that can help out guys like Ehlers and and whatever young guys they get back to show them how to play the game, man. I think they super super need that in this in Winnipeg. Now, because they're Winnipeg, it's not the sexiest team to play for. Okay, um, I'm not sure that Bar Barbashev would be able to be would be okay with going to a team with harsh winters, uh, not a sexy city really at all, but it is a family orientated city and it is a city that would embrace him in a big, big way. And it's also a team that if they were to trade Shifley and if they were to trade these Dubois would have a, a, a significant amount of cap room to maybe overpay a bit, just like it was with Chicago, to get, uh, we'll look at the cap room as that stands right now. Right now they have 12 million. Now if Dubois is off the books, there's another six. Uh, Shifley, depending on what they get back in the deal like that, they could certainly fit them in. And defense is definitely their biggest concern. But when it comes to Winnipeg, just getting guys to go there for them. If Barbashev would say, you know what, I, I think I wouldn't mind going to Winnipeg. I think they would be all over it. It's hard to get people to go there. And if he wanted to go there, if there was a reason why they could do that, and I would think it would be money orientated because they could probably throw an extra half million to 750000 his way on a long-term deal since they have the cap space to do it, they just might be able to motivate him to do so. And if they could, I'm if they could, I would do it if I was Winnipeg. It's just that type, they need to change the character of that room. And I believe Barbashev is that type of character that they need to build in that room. So what do you think, Winnipeg fans? What do you think about Barbashev at about $6 million? I realize it's a bit of an overpay, but when you can't find anybody, when there's nobody that's willing to go and somebody's willing to go, it's the price, I think, that teams have to pay. Comment in the comment section, Winnipeg fans. You're, they're great fans of Winnipeg, by the way. And that's another reason why anybody who goes to Winnipeg, I'll tell you right now, you're not going to get a better fan base. They support their players. They root for their players. They know hockey. They love hockey. It's a fantastic hockey city in the sense that they are passionate about the sport. And if you win in Winnipeg, you are a god, an absolute god. And that, when I say that, I know Winnipeg fans are going to have a lot of great comments here in the comment section. Subscribe to my channel. Let me know. Love to talk to you about it. All right, next. Detroit Red Wings. And um, I do, I, I personally believe that Debrinkat's going to end up in Detroit here as well, as long as they're wanting uh, to, have him, to have him there. He's a Michigan guy. In fact, uh, there was a couple of articles that have come out that he has actually kind of set, made it known that his top destination would be Detroit. So if that were to happen, let's say, let's um, be honest here. If Debrinkat were to go to Det Detroit, we're on the brink here of Detroit not being in a rebuild anymore. Um, you've got Debrinkat playing with Larkin. And uh, if you brought in Barbashev, that would be a fantastic line, man. Barbashev bringing, take, getting the puck out to those two guys would be insane. And Dabrinka, although he's small, actually plays way bigger than his size. He is he 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 gets to the areas in amazing ways, considering he's only five seven, and. Uh, he's uh he's just a solid contributor. Now, if you brought Barbashev to me. He's won a cup. Big, 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 big. This Detroit team, I don't think, correct me if I'm wrong, has one player that has won a cup. Not Perron, nobody. And I think they're heading to that place where they are searching to be in the playoffs. This, this rebuild has been going on long enough. And I know, you got some young guys you don't want to take away 
from guys like Jonathan Begrin and, uh, and or Bergeron, and I don't think you are. I think Bergeron can fit in here just fine. Um, you play Barbashev can play up and down the lineup. He could you could try him at center and Cop on the wing. He's a really good center. I personally think Cop's a better winger. So you'd have uh, Barbashev, Cop, and Raymond. You can bring Cop into the third line, which I personally think he'd be better at with Rasmussen. Bring Bergeron up, put Barbashev in the middle and Raymond on the right hand side. And you've got a deep team now that looks a lot like the Vegas Knights type of depth. Um, Rasmussen, I think, is going to take a step up. There's a whole bunch of... Raymond's going to take a step up almost surely this year. He had a little bit of a sophomore slumpish, but at 45 points and 21 as a 21-year-old in the NHL, that guy's probably going to be a point-to-game player. And of course, you still have David Perron there as a veteran leadership type guy that can that can pot him from anywhere. You got depth, tons of depth, and the, it appears that depth is winning in this NHL right now. Not to mention, Bergeron or sorry, uh, Barbashev brings the type of game that Stevie Eisman usually looks for with players. He plays both ways. Solid defensively, solid in the middle of the ice, solid offensively. Play he basically is a coach's dream, and I think he could help out Larkin a lot in the leadership role, which I think he needs. Could you really use some help with? I love this play for Detroit. Do you love this play for Detroit? He's only twenty-seven years old. He's probably going to cost you about five, five and a half for the next seven years. Um. I didn't look at the cap space here, but I'm pretty sure Detroit has the cap space uh, to do this. And I know there's going to be some issues. We'll look at that right now. 30 million in cap space. But of course, you've got, we all know that they are going to have to sign guys like, uh, you know, you bring Valino back, it's not going to cost you that much. Um, Adam Erne is probably on his, like this year, there's really nothing to worry about as far as, um, signing players. Next year, you're going to have Bergeron. You're going to have Raymond. You're going to definitely be adding more to the cap, uh, getting closer to uh, maxed out cap. Uh, of course, cider next year is going to cost a, a lot. But somewhere along the line, you're going to have to add guys like this. Um, and I think it's time here now. For them to give a give it a shot they're gonna have a lot of young guys coming up no doubt about that i would try not to give barbashev too much of a no trade clause in case some of these young guys come up and take a spot but that's the whole point you gotta take a spot and i think a lot of the things that's going a little difficult here in detroit is there's not a lot of competition for these young guys to take spots right now a guy like Barbashev that comes up, he brings a marker and says, look, you got to get this good and better or you ain't playing. I, I think that might have been the problem with Zadina. He was kind of gifted the spot a little too much because nobody could. there was nobody to compete with for the spot. Now you've got people to compete with. Now these young players are going to have to look at Barbashev and say, I have to get myself to that. And Barbashev gives them an example of what it means to be a professional so you can win a cup because I've already did it. And he can also say, you don't believe me? I already did it. So there's not much to argue about here, is there? I love it. I love that move for Detroit, although they're not my number one team that he may go to. That goes to the Pittsburgh Penguins. I think the Pittsburgh Penguins are going to be all over this and there's a million reasons why first of all they do a uh, look at their cap space they do actually finally have some cap space and I know they're going to have to restructure this defense for sure uh, I, I would hope that they're out there looking for so, some solid defensemen and I, I have a couple ideas where they may go in that regard like Graves from New Jersey uh, they desperately could use a guy like that but I still think they could have the cap room for that. And we'll look at that for a second. But look overall. Barbashev is a good... They, I, I believe they generally look at a guy like Sidney Crosby when they look at players. 
Sidney Crosby is absolutely going to love a guy like Barbashev. I think he would fit perfect. He plays Crosby's style. Now, the difficulty is he plays left wing, and that's kind of Gunsel's spot. All right? But you could play him here on the left side with his compadre, his idol probably, one of, what, probably one of his favorite players ever. He gets to play with Evgeny Malkin. Bring us some youthful Russian exuber exuberance here to Evgeny as well. It could help him out a lot. The guy grinds it out like crazy. He plays the right way. He plays a Crosby-style game on the wing. He cycles. He, he can do whatever you want. He can even play center because we know Malkin has a tendency to get injured from time to time. He's a good center too. So he could even take that center spot. Um, there's been talk of Granlin possibly being bought out. I'm not sure about that. But we'll look at now you would have Gunsel, Crosby, Rust, uh, Barbashev, Malkin, Raquel. I like that mix. And then you bring Granlin down here. I think he's more of a third liner. Uh, you got to find a center other than Jeff Carter to play with. But uh, they'll have to find that probably in free agency or in a trade in a trade and I really think he could help a guy like Alexander Nylander too this is a guy that's got all the skill but he does, he has to learn all the other parts of the game and it's been taking him a while to do so a guy like Barbashev I think would be a great example for somebody like Nylander or any other of the young players that might be coming up in Pittsburgh and for those of you that are like we got to rebuild and we got to get younger he's only 27 years old He's not super old. He's young enough. And let's face it, Pittsburgh ain't rebuilding. They're not. Dubas came out and said, if I could trust anybody, I could trust Crosby, Malkin, Latang. What's he telling you? They're not going anywhere. And if they're not going anywhere, there's no deep rebuild happening in Pittsburgh. So they get a little younger. They get a Russian guy to help out with Kenny Malkin and, and, and so on and so forth like that. All right, let's look at their cap space. I love this play. If they're not going to rebuild in Pittsburgh, I think a guy like this who already has a cup, they all they all, they pretty much all have cups in Pittsburgh, so it's not that much of an addition at that, but it doesn't hurt. Um, let's see what they got. They got $20 million in cap space. He's going to cost you. You might even get him on a lower AAV and maybe even a lower term with the opportunity to play with his, his, his possible idol in Malkin, you might be able to get him at a pretty good deal. You got to sign, what, O'Connor, uh, you know, maybe buy out Jeff Carter, and you still and you got a little more. You could re-sign Benino at one year for $1 million or something like that. I don't know what's going to happen with Zucker. Um, you wouldn't have to sign Zucker here. You'd have Barbashev instead, who brings a different layer of game than Zucker does, and I think a one that would be more valuable to the Pittsburgh Penguins. And you, and from what I can tell here, you still got $10 million to fill out this defense. I love this play for Pittsburgh. I really do. Tell me what you think, Pittsburgh Penguins fans. Do you like the idea of Barbashev going to Pittsburgh? Um how, how much would you like to sign him for? I believe he's going to be at least five and a half. And I believe he's going to get seven years term. So take that into consideration. Subscribe to my channel. Comment in my comments. Comment in the comment section. And let me know. All right. That's my full 42, boys and girls. That's all I have to give to you today. Hey, that looks out. not too bad. Have a great day, everybody. Comment. And let me know what you think about this fine programming. I will be doing, uh, I believe I'll be doing Eric Carlson next in trade, in a trade.